from a remote location this time, Ed DeRosa, Sarah Badwi, both of Horse Racing Nation to talk some derby preps for the weekend with you. Ed, what's it like not sitting next to me and being far, far away? Uh, well, hopefully the information will be the same, but on spring break with my kids, and the only thing I love more than spending time with the family is bragging about a good performance at the racetrack. So I couldn't let last week's perfect score go to waste. Hopefully we can do it again this week. Definitely. Three for three, only one of which was favored last week with the Derby preps. You liked White Barrio, Tis the Bomb, and who's the other one? Cyberknife that I uh, Cyber still Knife, am uh, <laughs> not totally on board with, but great. I'm not sure I am well. either. What's up? I said I'm not sure I am either, but, you know, that's the fun thing about these preps is you can't get married to a horse, which I am famous for. It does happen, but they're each individual races and uh, we have another big one coming up in four weeks, the Derby, but three more preps this week and money to be made no matter what. Definitely. Last of the hundred point preps, only one prep to go after that, the Lexington, which is kind of everybody's last possible shot to get <clears> some points, but three different tracks again this week uh, over to Aqueduct for the Wood Memorial. What are your thoughts? Uh, this is probably the biggest price I'll have on top, unquestionably, in fact, because uh, I do think Baris, uh, eight to one on the morning line. Uh, I went to the replay well. Uh, was it last week that we talked about that? And I actually uh, wanted to go back to it again because the chart comments for this one on uh, the last two, very wide, uh, the chart would have you believe. And uh, I don't, I'm not, I don't want to say that was by design, but I will say I thought the horse in both those instances against state breads was much the best, and they just kept him out of trouble. Wood Memorial is definitely uh, much deeper waters for the Sun Allow Band, and I do think Nine Furlongs probably going to be testing uh, the stamina influence, given that he's out of a successful appeal mare. But based on what I saw from those performances, and really not sold on the numbers that Mo Donegal and Morello have received, I'm going to take a shot with Baris in the wood. I like it. I think that I see a New York bred coming out to face a uh, tougher open company this time out. And while he certainly has a shot, it's not really where I'm going <laughs> here. Um, I'm going to go to early voting. I think that uh, since his buyer figure got raised for the Withers, even though it's still not of the same caliber as some other contenders in here, that'll take a lot of money, such as Morello and Mo Donegal. Uh, I think just the way he did it, having the early speed on the front end in here and um I think that he's the horse that's moving in the right direction. We saw Uno Ho come back to win at a giant price. Then maybe has a little bit of an excuse last time out with the hitting the rail. So I still think that that race is pretty um, indicative of a decent performance. There was another one um, in his maiden race, actually, that came back to win um, next time out. Iconic Adventure at Gulfstream Park. So he's been facing horses that have been able to step up and win or win again. And I think that of the Chad Browns that we're going to be seeing this weekend, obviously Zandon more battle tested than he is. Who we'll talk about in the bluegrass, but I think that he's interesting in here and I like his chances. I'm with you though, about being against Mo Donegal and Morello. I think that those horses, Mo Donegal doesn't have the early speed at all has done some kind of silly type green things in his different races. And obviously there's talent there, but I want to see him actually get a win. And then Morello, a horse that has been winning. I don't think he's been facing super tough companies. So I'd like to see another one from him. Mo Donegal, I, I feel like does have the best race on the page, which was the Remsen, but uh, a lot has happened or in some cases not happened uh, with targeting the fountain of youth and then deciding to skip that for here post etc maybe in play but just seems like a lot going on with this horse not related to performance on the racetrack since the remsen so at a short price uh, that's enough of a question mark to me and then early voting is super interesting because i definitely like what we saw uh, and it was somewhat en enigmatic after his last win because david aragorn was very impressed tweeted about it then the number came back slow then they raised the number Ragazin still has it as extremely slow as 16, uh, which probably doesn't mean much to anybody, but most of these horses are running eights and nines, lower the better. 16 is slow, but another uh, thing I look at, uh, Thorough Manager has early voting as the fastest. So if you're a believer, you're going to get a price, I think, because of that and couldn't talk anyone off. Uh, I would probably slide him 
third ish in my mind, but uh, it, it's super interesting to see what he does here based on all the questions about his performance last out. Definitely. Uh, do you have any more thoughts on the Wood Memorial before we move on to Keeneland? I don't. <laughs> I, I would. I would. Uh, I would say the Derby winner not coming from the Wood Memorial. Um, and I think it's what 30, 39, something in the 30s of a race streak of 04 <laughs> in the Derby from the Wood Memorial. So not that it hasn't produced some high quality horses that then come back and win high quality stakes races. But as far as the Derby is concerned, not the most productive prep that we've seen in recent years. No, certainly in the points era. Right. Um, Keeneland Saturday for the Bluegrass Stakes will actually both be there in person to witness uh, the return of Smile <laughs> Happy, a horse that I know Mark, our uh, CEO at Horse Racing Nation, is quite high on and is a big fan of. We know Mattress Mac is as well, uh, nine to five favorite in the Bluegrass, taking a shot against or uh, thinking he's too good. Uh, so this is one of those races as a public handicapper, so to speak, I struggle with because uh, I will say that Smile Happy is going to be my public selection. Uh, now, if Mattress Max involved in the pools, it might be impossible to bet him to win. Uh, but I do think he's the most likely winner in it. Two to one, uh, nine to five, maybe a little light, but at two to one, uh, I think that would be fair. Uh, my issue with this race is I think command performance, uh, the, the maiden and then rattle and roll, uh, they're 12 and eight to one on the morning line, respectively. Uh, to me, it's about getting one of those maybe in the top two, uh, perhaps a trifecta if you get them both in and then it doesn't really matter who wins with them. Uh, so in my mind, smile happy, not enough just to have them to win. I, I think command performance and rattle and roll are sort of the keys uh, to wagering on the race. But uh, I do think Smile Happy is the most likely winner. I do know uh, that Kenny probably, well, I shouldn't say I know, my sense is Kenny feels some pressure uh, given Mattress Mac not involved at all in the ownership of this horse in particular. But he knows the money's there. He knows this horse has been the individual favorite in the Derby pools because of Mattress Mac. All eyes are on him with the win. Uh, he would sort of uh, support that and give Kenny probably his best shot uh, to win the Derby since way back when with Harlan's Holiday, who also won the Bluegrass. So uh, I think he's well met for this spot. It's not their Derby, but I think Kenny feels like they want to go in with a win and not just a prep. Uh, so he is my pick on top. And certainly a good horse um, coming out of the same race as my top pick in here is Zandon both defeated by Epicenter, who then came back with a stellar performance in the Louisiana Derby. You were there for that as well. He showed that he could rate that day. So they've been facing the highest of quality that we've seen in these Derby preps, at least so a lot of people believe. And Epicenter probably right now the likely favorite to win the Derby, pending whatever happens on Saturday. Um, but Zanin is going to be my top choice in here. I would just love to see him get a clean trip and maybe he's second best to smile happy with both um, getting the right setup for both of them. And then there's no knocks on either of them. And that's just the way things shake out. And it's a fairly run race. But he had a bad break last time out. And then in the Remsen with um, everything that happened with Mo Donegal, uh, you know, being pushed into the rail and not exactly like totally into the rail, but made it super tight on him, lengthy inquiry for that race, following um, then the suspension for IRAD. And so I would love to see him just get a clean trip and maybe he's second best and that's just how it turns out. But that's what I'm looking for for him. I think he's a high quality horse and I know that I'm sure Chad is looking for a fair race for this guy as well. And Chad uh, did not win last year with the Bluegrass, but certainly came in guns blazing with highly motivated who did just get beat by essential quality. So a great renewal last year. What do you make of Emmanuel? I think you and I uh, are the only two handicappers I've seen not pick him. Uh, it sounds like a lot of, uh, oh, he's going to be loose on the lead, gates of wire type buzz with him. I, I'm not as much of a trip handicapper. So to me, that didn't really speak out because uh, he's not any faster than the rest. And I actually think a few others are faster. So he didn't really factor much for me. Me either. And as far as those thinking he's going to be loose on the lead, do we really think that Paco on Fenwick is just going to hold and pretend <laughs> that it's fine to let him go? I think that 
with a lot of jockeys, they do that snatch and grab, and we all kind of cringe at not sending their speed horses to the front and letting horses get away with slower fractions. But I don't see Paco as the type of jockey to make that happen. I think that Fenwick is going. Maybe he's not fast enough early, but I don't think it's going to be an easy coast to coast for Emmanuel. And I also just don't think he's as good as a lot of other people do. All right. I'm with you. <laughs> um, for a little price underneath, I know you talked about command performance and rattle and roll. Mine to round out the trifecta uh, would be Volcanic. Um, this is a horse that I've kind of liked since he was a two-year-old, came back in his three-year-old debut to win over Charge It, who came back to sec uh, finish second in the Florida Derby, then is um, third in the, Tampa or the Sam F. Davis, classic causeway winner of that race. I would be interested to see what we get from him. Third off the layoff, third start of his three-year-old year, and he's going to be a big price in here. Um, if, even if he shows up for third, adding some value underneath would be pretty nice. Yeah, I, I definitely, uh, this kind of a cliche tout line uh, is an excuse to use multiple horses. I definitely think this is the type of race where I would be very surprised if there isn't uh, – I don't know, 20 to 1 seems aggressive because I think Red and Roll and Command Performance are the two I would want. But definitely some horse outside the outer tier is going to be first or second, and that's how I'm playing the race. I agree with you on that. And I think the race that we're about to talk about, not too much value <laughs> to be found in the Santa Anita Derby, which will be going off about 45 minutes after the Bluegrass. Yeah, uh, you know, there there might be value in the wind pool. Uh it's hard to think exotic wise because it, it's the obvious three. Um, if if you really like one of the three, though, I think the value will be there because the money's going to be spread enough where the one you like is going to be the right price. For me, that's Forbidden Kingdom. Uh, I just have to trust my eyes. I don't handicap visually much, uh, but Forbidden K Kingdom c certainly checks the boxes that I normally look to check in terms of how he fits on past performances and speed. His is the only derby performance to date, maybe epicenter since, but he's not running this weekend. That was uh, two weeks ago. His is, Forbidden Kingdom's the only uh, performance to date that really made me say, wow, this is a derby horse. I was in awe. I thought it was by far the best we had seen to date with only others maybe coming close since. I'm gonna ride that wave here in the Santa Anita Derby. Seven to five, six to five, certainly no great shakes. But if you think he wins this race 50% of the time, that's actually decent value uh, in the wind pool. So that would be my only play in this case is if he is higher than even money, I would bet Forbidden Kingdom to win. But I do think he's the most likely winner, and I'm hoping he backs up what I saw a few weeks ago. I agree with you there, and I think that just the early speed that he has has been pretty devastating and impressive. Kind of concerning a little bit that Doppelganger didn't really come back and show up, but at the same time, <laughs> I said that about Cyberknife at Kapuna, and then Cyberknife came back with a pretty nice win in the Arkansas Derby, so whatever the horse that they defeat does next time out, not always indicative of the performance of that specific horse, though it is a key to possibly look at and consider. Does it bother you at all that Messier has already finished in front of Forbidden Kingdom? Mm -hmm. Or do you look at that as, oh, this happened a while ago, horses are improving, not going to be an issue now? Yeah, I definitely think this is a, a different horse to use another cliche. Uh, just you know, the, the last was sort of a coming out party, wake up call, whatever you want to call it. But uh, th this is definitely, uh, just to, to me, that sort of stereotypical light bulb uh, moment where there was a step forward and now, or hopefully a step forward that continues progression. Sometimes they plateau, sometimes they throw in, you know, an, an aberration where it's the best performance of their career and never run back to it. All that's a concern, which is why, you know, I'm, I, I can't get too excited and say, oh, I'm going to, you know, I love this horse. I'm going to bet him and he's four to five and I still bet. Need to be, need to have a strong line in the sand. But I think he wins this race half the time. So anything better in the wind pool, I'm in. But yeah, your your questions are valid. It's just a matter of the price you're willing to take to answer him. And Messier and uh, the other former stable mate of Baffert's, very tough customers uh, to me. Uh, if Messier or Forbidden Kingdom win this, they're unquestionably going to be the favorite for the Kentucky Derby. 
Yeah, I think that's fair. I know a lot of eyes are on Taiba with the expensive purchase price, only making his second start now, hmm. both former Bafferts. The field size in here, I think, too, makes it more of a jockey's race when it's only six horses and a lot of them want to go to the front end early. But I don't see in a, a scenario where the speed horses are wearing each other out and it sets up for a closer. It's it's hard to close at Santa Anita. It's hard to close at a lot of different tracks. And I think they're just too good and too fit to really cancel each other out. So I'm with you on Forbidden Kingdom. Obviously, the two former Baffords, interesting and logical but i think that forbidden kingdom has just done more on the racetrack and i think i'm with you on this although i don't know that i'd be rushing to the windows to play anybody <laughs> in here with uh prices and just being well, shot, such a short field i'll definitely see how it goes with the previous two uh if, I, if Baris wins uh i'll feel more confident about maybe uh taking a, a short price on forbidden kingdom but if you know i can't hit the broad side of a barn probably going to be a little more gun shy at six or seven to five uh, is the gambler psychology goes. But uh, th this is one race where uh, I, I do think, you know, there is opportunity if you really feel strongly, as I said, because the money will be spread between those three and, and Taiba in the second career start. I just have to let a horse like that beat me. But if you're a believer, he's going to be third choice. So if you just think, man, this is, you know, this horse is the truth that the next justify, whatever you want to say about him, you're going to get your price too, but he's just not for me. The one positive of him running off the screen would be he'll be a certain underlay in his third career start in the Kentucky Derby. So there's upside to that even, but I'm with Forbidden Kingdom and the My Racehorse crew. Very nice. And we know there's a lot of them out there. So. There's a lot of them out there and, and they <laughs> do bet. So that's another thing in the wind pool. Uh, even on the big days, their money is felt uh, in the pools, which is great. Uh, but unfortunately, sometimes can make uh, a horse uh, yeah, un unbettable. I uh, don't think that'll be the case here because uh, the, the ba Baffert fans, uh, they like their horses too and have reasons to be cheering for the, the former Baffert pupils. Uh, so it, it, it's going to be a fun race. Definitely fun to watch. Maybe not the most fun to bet, but definitely fun to <laughs> watch to see how these last couple of derby preps leave things as far as the point standing going into the Kentucky Derby, which is so soon. It feels like it feels like each week we get closer and closer and being in Louisville for the first time, it kind of feels uh, much more electric in the air getting uh, closer to that Derby. It's crazy to just see uh, Kentucky Derby paraphernalia at the grocery store. <laughs> I've never seen that. Yeah. Before. <laughs> nice. Well, and uh, it's reasonably priced as well. So beat, beat the lines <laughs> at the gift shop at Churchill. And uh, yeah, if you see something you like the, Prices at the grocery store are legit, and uh, it's a festival in Louisville, so uh, definitely enjoy it. And being downtown certainly should add to it for us as well. It's HRN headquarters. So, uh, yeah, I feel like once the preps are over, it's officially derby time in Louisville. Exciting stuff. You'll be back just in time for all the buzz and excitement. Um, probably yeah, running into you on Saturday for Bluegrass Day. But until then, any final closing thoughts? No, I think uh, Santa Anita Derby is going to have the Kentucky Derby favorite, and the other two certainly will add some spice to the mix. But uh, I think we're pretty much down to epicenter in the Santa Anita Derby winner as the horses we're all excited about. All right. Well, we'll see what happens in the preps and then eventually the actual run for the Roses itself, and I'll see you soon. All right. Good luck this weekend, everybody. Make sure you are liking and subscribing to the Horse Racing Nation YouTube channel for more on all of the derby preps, derby itself. See you soon.